Good morning. Uh, this month's character trait is being bully free. So I'm going to read a book to you today called The Bully Blockers Club. On Monday, Lottie waved to her mother and skipped to school. She had a new backpack, new shoes, and a new teacher. It was going to be a great year. But when she sat down at her new desk, someone behind her said, Yick! What's that smell? What smell? Lottie asked. I'm Grant Grizzly, and I say there's a smell, and it's coming from around you. Lottie peered inside her desk and sniffed. Grant Grizzly looked at her, held his nose, and laughed. Lottie shrank down in her seat. Maybe I do smell, she thought. Her stomach hurt. Her smile slipped. When Lottie got home, she told her little brother, Jerome, and her big sister, Lily, what had happened. Should I tell Mrs. Kahlberg, Lottie asked. I don't want to be a tattletale. All Grant did was say something, Jerome pointed out. If he does it again, give him a karate chop. No karate chops, Lily said, frowning. And it's not tattling to let the teacher know there's a problem. Still, why don't you try ignoring him first? Maybe he'll leave you alone. Lottie decided to try Lily's idea. On Tuesday, she ignored Grant. She ignored the hand that swiped her eraser. She ignored the foot that kicked the back of her chair all morning. She ignored the nasty whispers. Grant never did anything while the teacher was looking, but he didn't leave Lottie alone. If anything, he got worse. She's so stupid, she doesn't even know when someone's talking to her, he told his friends in the hall. Then he yelled, hey, stupid, right in Lottie's face. Lottie's stomach hurt. Her eyes prickled. She skipped morning recess and went to the nurse's office. But when the nurse asked what was wrong, Lottie couldn't say anything. Later, she told Lily and Jerome what had happened. Smack him in the nose, Jerome insisted. No nose smacking, Lily said. I think you should tell the teacher. Lottie shook her head. What if she thinks I'm a tattletale? Lily sighed. Well then, why don't you try to be his friend? Sometimes kids act that way because they don't have any friends. Or you could make a joke out of it, Jerome suggested. Lottie decided to give their ideas a try. On Wednesday, while Mrs. Kahlberg was talking to a parent in the hall, Lottie smiled at Grant. She asked if he liked baseball. She offered to lend him a pencil when he didn't have one. I'm allergic to ugly, Grant replied, and you're giving me a rash. Lottie tried to laugh. That's funny, she said. I'd rather be funny than funny looking, Stinko, Grant replied. Then he knocked all the books off her desk as he went past. The other kids in the room looked up at the noise. Then they saw Grant and looked quickly down again. Lottie's stomach hurt, her eyes prickled, and her shoulders drooped. That night, Lottie picked at her dinner. What's wrong, her father asked. You're awfully quiet, her mother said. Lottie tried to smile, but she burst into tears. Lily and Jerome explained everything that had happened. Why didn't you tell us before, her mother asked. Why didn't you tell Mrs. Kahlberg? Tomorrow morning, I'm calling your teacher, her father said. If Grant bothers you again, look him in the eye and tell him to stop. Keep telling him until he does and make sure that Miss Kahlberg knows. Thursday morning, Mrs. Kahlberg called Lottie and Grant to her desk. Is there a problem, she asked. No problem here, Grant said, smiling. Lottie was afraid to say anything with Grant standing right there. The teacher waited and finally said, everyone at our school is supposed to feel safe. If you don't feel safe, you need to tell an adult. That's not tattling. If you're making other people feel unsafe, then you are breaking a school rule, understand? She looked at Grant and Lottie. I got it, Grant said and headed back to his desk. Lottie nodded silently. Mrs. Kahlberg leaned forward. I'll keep an eye out, she said. 
So will the other adults. Lottie nodded again, but she wasn't sure it was going to help. At lunch, after checking to make sure no adults were watching, Grant swiped Lottie's dessert. You're so fat, you don't need cake, he said, stuffing it in his own mouth. Lottie's knees rattled and her throat was dry, but she remembered her father's advice. She looked into Grant's face and said, I don't like what you're doing. Leave me alone. Grant laughed and grabbed her sandwich and grapes. How are you going to stop me? He asked and walked away. Lottie wasn't hungry anymore anyway. When she told her family what Grant had done, they were upset. You're not fat, her mother said. You actually look sort of okay, Jerome added. I mean, for a girl. I'll leave your teacher a message again tonight, her father said, and I'll stop by and see her tomorrow after school. Did you tell her about this? Jerome rolled his eyes. What are teachers going to do, he asked. They can't follow her around all day. Lottie thought about what Jerome had said. It was true that Grant usually left her alone when grown-ups were watching, but grown-ups weren't always around. Who was? Suddenly she smiled. Please don't call or go to school yet, she told her father. Give me a chance to try something first. Lottie watched Grant push Lori down. She watched him swipe Barney's homework. She watched him cut in line and knock Ben's books out of his hands. She noticed Grant only acted that way when grown-ups weren't looking. After lunch, Lottie found Lori and Barney and Ben. I saw what Grant did to you today, and I have an idea, she said. Let's form a club, she explained her plan. That afternoon, when Grant grabbed Lottie's crayons, Barney said, Hey, what are you doing? Yeah, said Lori, those aren't yours. By now, everyone, including Mrs. Kahlberg, was watching. Grant turned red and handed the crayons back. At afternoon recess, when Grant grabbed Barney's soccer ball, Ben, Lottie, and Lori were there. They didn't yell. They just asked loudly what he thought he was doing. The playground supervisor came over to see what they were talking about. Grant gave the ball back. What business is it of yours? He asked the friends. It's club business, they replied. On Monday morning, school began a little differently. Mrs. Colbert told the class that they were skipping math that day. There have been some problems at school, so today every class is talking about bullying, safety, and making everyone feel welcome. How do you feel when someone's bullying you? She asked. Sad, said Lori. Scared, Lottie whispered. Sick, Barney added. Lonely, angry, other children said. Grant was silent. Could we come up with some rules so that people don't have to feel sad, scared, sick, lonely, or angry, Mrs. Kahlberg asked. There was a pause. Then hands flew up. Mrs. Kahlberg wrote suggestions on the board. Then Lottie told everyone about the club. A few days, other kids at school heard about the club. Can we join too, they asked. Sure, Lottie and her friends replied. Everyone's welcome. Barney even came up with a great name for their club, the Bully Blockers. Almost everybody's a member now, Lottie reported. It's nice keeping an eye out for other people. Things got better after that. Kids spoke up when they saw something wrong and reached out to anyone who looked lonely. Hey, you want to play too? Me? Sure. The adults were watching too, at lunchtime and at recess and in the halls. After a while, Grant didn't seem as big and scary. One morning, he even helped Lottie when her backpack spilled. Here's your lunch, he said. Lottie smiled. Thanks. A few days later, Lottie skipped to school. She had new friends, a new attitude, and a new club. It was going to be a great year. The bully blockers was a brilliant idea. She wasn't about to tell Jerome that he'd given it to her.